Welcome to Flipping the Table and another honest conversation about food, farming, and the future. Today, Michael speaks with a fifth generation dairy farmer from the organically certified Moreda Family Farms. The family is being sued and harassed by extreme animal rights activists who are behind a November ballot measure in Sonoma County, California, that not only threatens the region's small and mid scale farmers, but could also lead to other campaigns across the nation. Shalina shares her decision to take a year off from the international Ducati racing team to fight the measure and build more understanding about the kind of agriculture that makes Sonoma County the food mecca that it is. Enjoy the show. Hello. I have a few surprises this summer, a couple of which I'd like to mention because they're linked to my conversation today with Shalina Moreda. The first is that an extremist group of animal rights activists gathered enough signatures to place a terribly written measure on the November ballot for Sonoma County, California. Shalina is co-founder of Communities for Food and Family Farms, a new organization fighting the measure. And it's pleasing and surprising how her fight has uniquely unified progressives and conservatives across the county and the state. If Measure J were to pass, it would very likely destroy one of the nation's model small and mid-scale farming economies and the world-renowned food community of chefs, artisans, and high-quality retailers it serves. The backers of Measure J, titled Stop Factory Farming, state their aim is to outlaw concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs, in the county. The problem is that the CAFOs that are a real problem do not actually exist here in this county. Sonoma County is a place where small and mid-scale farms exist due to the larger community's values and the tourism and wine industries that depend on the cheese, meat, and poultry that are produced here. Our largest dairies and poultry operations are minuscule compared to those in other parts of the state and the nation. But that is why... The central organizer of this YES campaign, which is called Direct Action Everywhere, chose this place to begin. The absence of big animal agriculture means less money to fight their campaign. As stated in a video on the website, the mission of Direct Action Everywhere is, and I quote, every last slaughterhouse will shut down in one generation. Now, some on the surface might think, oh, that would be a nice thing. No more meat production. But if you understand the link between grazing animals and ecosystems, the nutritional value of meat and dairy, rural economies, and the infrastructures that farmers need, you see clearly the potential tragedy for such an extreme goal in a place like Sonoma County. And another big surprise for me this summer is Shalina herself. She's not just a millennial raised on the Moreda family farms, which is an organic dairy, but she is also a Ducati motorcycle racing team member who competes globally and is rated among the top 10 in the world in her category. She's also a cover girl model who told me milk does a body good. She is also co-founder of an animal rescue organization called NorCal Livestock Evacuation, which launched during the terrible Tubbs fire here back in 2017, and has since that time saved over 10,000 animals. They've saved over 10,000 animals from 18 of the largest fires in this state. So, Shalina is obviously fearless, but as you will see, she is also a great communicator. In our conversation, we'll discuss why she has taken a year off from the racing she loves and why every nonprofit advocacy group working to create a healthy, organic, and regenerative food and farming system is aligned with Shalina and against Measure J. Let's begin. Welcome, Shalina. Great to have you here in my home, Santa Rosa. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
We're going to talk about Measure J and your uh, dairy life, Yep, <laughs> um, which is great. And uh, But I always like to start with that origin story. So how did you get into dairy? And then just as importantly, how'd you become a, a Ducati motorcycle racer? <laughs> yeah, I like that part of the story too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I was born and raised on a dairy ranch. I was lucky enough to have a family that's been in the dairy industry for, I'm fifth generation. Mm-hmm. Petaluma, so, near Petaluma? Yep, Petaluma, um, mm-hmm. on the outskirts. Mm-hmm. My cell phone doesn't work out there. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, but it starts off with, you know, my family's immigrants. They came over here to find a better life, and my great, great, great grandfather worked for a dairy farm and he loved it. And he worked really hard to be able to position himself to buy that same dairy farm. It was the Murphy ranch. I actually have a picture of it in like 1904 with a horse and buggy. And when my grandpa, my great, great grandfather was just working on the ranch. Wow. And so he, he, he worked real hard Where'd to he make come a, from? a better life for his family. Uh, Portugal he from the Azores. We're from the Azores. Oh, wow, yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> a lot of dairymen came from there to yeah. this area. Yeah. M- yeah cool. Moreira is yeah. our name Moreira, and they yeah. changed the spelling when he came over here, like so many, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's how it all started for us. And the family worked really hard together and exceptionally well together from what we understand. And it, it, we're a true family farm. We help each other out. We have to get up in the middle of the night to, to help on the ranch. And that's what we actually, we really like it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, so you grew up on this ranch and mm-hmm. then how did you get into Ducati motorcycles? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't, I, I ra- I've raced for Ducati for the last two years on the factory team, which has been amazing, but I will race anything and everything I can get my hands on. I love, I love motorcycles. I race street bikes, the ones that go 180 not miles an hour. And I race at tracks like Daytona, Laguna Seca, Indianapolis. I was the first female to race a motorcycle at Indianapolis, which is cool. Wow. Um, but I also race flat track on the dirt, stuff like that. But, uh, but it started from being raised on the ranch. Honestly, I rode quads to bring the cows in because you mm-hmm. have to bring them in from way out in the fields mm-hmm. and you have to go real slow with the cows. But right. but it started a, a love for motorcycles for me. And then I saw the guys racing on TV and I would always go, I want to do that. Wow. And everybody said, you can't do that. Only a small percentage of people get to be professional athletes in the world and, and that's unobtainable and you're a girl, so you can't do it. I race against the guys, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm just crazy enough that I went for it. And growing up on the farm, you have real strong work ethic. And without that, I could have never made it in this career. But I've I've gotten to race all over the world, China, Qatar, Japan, France, Italy, Spain. Like I'm the female that they that they send when they want to ruffle feathers at somewhere in somewhere like Qatar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they send me in because I love I don't mind ruffling feathers, you wow. know. Good for you. Yeah, it's been Good it's been you. amazing. I got I landed CoverGirl. I'm a CoverGirl model. Wow. Um, so I'm on the commercials alongside, you know, Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Wow. It's a pretty incredible life. And it all started, honest to God, it started right there on the farm with parents that told me I could do anything I wanted to do. Wow. So I told them it's their fault that I'm doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. <laughs> well, uh, we, we hope you remain totally healthy and safe. I wear good those, gear, those, dry helmets, those good leathers. Those bikes go fast. <laughs> and Ducatis yeah. are amazing. Oh, they're fun. Yeah, they're, they're so beautiful. fun. They're, they're gorgeous bikes. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. That's exciting. I mean, yeah. it just shows you the uh, the breadth and depth of what someone coming from a farm uh, can do in their lives. Yeah, it's thank you. Yeah, you can do anything. That's right. And um, that's the me- that's the overarching message, man, that I try to pu- push out because if you tell a kid that they can do anything they want, they just might take you serious. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so tell them it. <laughs> that's right. And today, actually, we're going to talk about something a little, uh, uh, quite a bit different. And and I'm, I mean... You know, you just described this exciting life you have, but you have decided to participate in the campaign to defeat Measure J. Yeah. Which is surprising in some ways, given your life. Yeah. So, so, you know. I could just stick to it, you know. I could just, I had, I could go race again this year, but I, I called up my biggest sponsors and I called up Roland Sands. He's the uh, sponsor for the series that I race in, the Hooligan Series in Moto America. And I explained to him what's going on. And um, I was a little nervous that maybe they'd say, you know, you, you got to make your choice and, you know, not be happy with me. But he it was quite the opposite. He told me, you know, food systems are a big deal. And he's right in line with my way of thinking. And he said, you, you've you got to fight this. This is your your farm, your livelihood, your family's legacy. And and it's going to affect all the rest of us. He, he lives down in Southern California. And he said, this is, if you don't stop this here, 
it's going to come across California and it's going to go across the United States. So you have to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really sit with myself and make a decision here. Like, do I sit back and, and go, do I go racing and, and go have fun and further my career and have a blast out there riding motorcycles and doing battles on the track? Or do I stay here and, and do what I know that I'm good at? I know that I can get the message out and, and help the community. I love stepping up to help the community, Mm -hmm. something I, I like to do. And, and I just had to go, if, if I go racing, I go off and I do my thing and I come back in November and my family's farm is gone and I didn't stand up and help my dad and my brother and my mom and, and the next generation, what the hell am I? You know, I, I couldn't live with myself. So mm-hmm. I had to make a tough call. I can go back racing next year. I hope that they'll, they've said that they'll take me back. I hope that they'll take me back. Mm-hmm. But I had to make I had to make. I that think it's decision. an interesting story for them to tell, actually, about their um, their commitment to agriculture and food systems. I mean, uh, so you know, I think actually there's a there's a nice story there for I them hope, to tell about you. Your I character. hope they think that too. Yeah, <laughs> I think they will. I think they they will. So you know, you you said that uh, you could come back in November and think your family would farm would be gone that quickly. You know, I, I don't know if I agree that it would be gone that quickly, but I think that if it passed, the threat of it going away we'd could be, be very real. Yeah, we'd be we'd right. be deemed illegal. Yeah. So, so 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 let's talk about your dairy talk about your dairy farm. Describe your dairy farm. Okay. It's organic, um, right? Yeah, we're organic. Um I mean, but the way that we farm, it's we, we laugh because it's been organic a lot further than what organ when organic was around, you mm-hmm. know? And regenerative is the new term now. And the first time I heard the word regenerative, the person that explained it to me was a newer farmer down the road. And she was telling me all about regenerative farming. And I was like, oh, so you're talking about the way that we've always done things. You know, Mm -hmm. we do, we rotate the pastures. We watch how the cows eat the grass. We, they, we know when they're going up on the hill to get the better grasses. We pay attention to cows will tell you what they want to eat. You know, they'll tell you when they're done eating in a certain field. They know. And so we've always studied the way that our cows move around and that has benefit to the soil and the grasses that are in the area because animals naturally, they know what to eat, they know what to do, and they will keep the soil healthier if you allow them to. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's the way that we do things out there. Our, our, I love coming home. I travel all around the world. I love coming home to Sonoma County and I love being living in the Bay area and seeing when I come over the hill from the airport, you know, and I'm driving home and I get to see all the rolling pastures, all the hills and mm-hmm. our cows dotting the hillsides. It's, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I think that the way that we farm and the area that I have the privilege to live in, you know, is I'm really, I'm lucky to have been born here and I want to see it remain like this. I, I want to see farm farms keep the hills green and, and all that, not become housing. Mm-hmm. And so Measure J basically is saying that concentrated animal feeding operations should not be allowed in, in Sonoma County. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this, there's a definition that I've, I've shared in the introduction. I want to, I want to point out what you just said though, okay. confined versus Con- concentrated. concentrated. Yes. So Thank you. one of the narratives is that they're saying that it's confined animal mm-hmm. feeding operations. It's not actually the case. Mm-hmm. It's called concentrated. Right. They're doing that on purpose because when you think of that, when you think of a confined or a concentrated animal feeding operation, the image in people's head is that they're in stalls. Mm -hmm. These cows aren't in stalls. They have barns that are as big as football fields, bigger, big as two football fields, you know, that they can move all around in. These aren't in, in small stalls. It's, it's very comfortable for them and they are allowed access to outside. They can go out on the fields. A lot of times they like to stay in the barns because they're more comfy. They got nice bedding. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it's, it's hot. hot. Or they it's raining. Under shade or, or, or it's really muddy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they're making it, they're demonizing something that we're providing cover for the animals and providing a, a very comfortable, there's a thing called cow comfort. It's an industry term. We study it, you know? And so for us, it's very important that the cows stay comfortable. They're females and females don't tend to do anything that you want them to do if they're not happy and stress free. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're a little stubborn in that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we want to keep them happy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, so you have, uh, you have both fields and you have, obviously you got to have the big stalls for them to go into, not stalls, but big barns. Big barns. Yeah. How many animals, how many cows do you have? 
So we have uh, about 750 right now, mm -hmm. which is just over the limit that they're saying right. for Measure J, right. which brings up another point. If, right. Please just bring it up. It, so they're saying that this is only going to affect dairies that are over 700 cows. Well, if, if we didn't think if, if it was actually only going to affect dairies that were only up to 700 cows, it'd be real easy for us to just sell off 50 cows. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. If you read the verbiage in, in what will be the new laws, mm -hmm. they're going down to 200 cows. And even below that, if you read into it a little bit more, even below that, they have authority to go on to farms that are even less than that if they deem it necessary. Mm -hmm. So the verbiage Meaning here is... This, the county, if the county... Yeah, the, the county, but they haven't even defined who, who that who is. Within who, the county, you know, right, and, right. and it gives access to animal... Uh, activist groups, mm -hmm. things like that, which is very dangerous for us. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think most people understand the regulations that we're already under. California has the strictest regulations in the nation. Sonoma County has the strictest regulations in California. Mm -hmm. So we're already under very strict regulations. Even though we're under very strict regulations, most of us are also voluntarily humane certified. Right. So we're going above and beyond the very strictest regulations that there are, mm -hmm. you know, because we think that that's important. And so I, I just, uh, you know, when, when you, and the thing that I was going to say is that the animal activists that have been around here, people don't understand the people, the public, the community doesn't understand how much that we've been being attacked by these people already. Mm -hmm. I have an app on my phone that shows me what airplanes are flying over because we consistently have planes and air uh, drones that fly over our place to try to video us and find any little thing that they can to make us look bad, you know, mm -hmm. and publicize it and put our addresses online and, and entice people to come and storm our properties and attack us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's, it's insanity. They've brought avian influenza into our county. Our county's never had avian influenza before. We have video of them sneaking onto one of the, one of the poultry farms, two of the poultry farms actually. They've admitted themselves that they that they snuck in to the building where avian influenza broke out. And they they did it to save four chickens. Well, because they did that, hundreds of thousands of chickens had to get euthanized immediately. And 1.6 million have been killed in Sonoma County because of that one act. And so when they say that they want to save the animals, and these are the people that we're going to allow to have authority over the farmers who've been doing this for generations. If, if we weren't taking care of our animals, our animals wouldn't take care of us. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure they would have authority. I, I, I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm with you in the sense that these animal rights activists that are, in my view, very extremist because they don't really look, they, they paint broad brushes mm -hmm. uh, instead of they really do. looking at the details, seeing how the system works, the way the ordinance they're proposing has been written would put at risk a lot of farms in this a county. A lot. Yeah. And, and so it is, it's, it's, it's a bummer whether uh, in the end they would have the authority, they could complain. They want the authority. They want the they authority. Have, they I have written it in a way yeah, for them want, to get the authority. the authority. Right. They and, want the authority. And so whether the county allows that or not, that's right. the way that they have written it in. Luckily the county, uh, I yeah. think every county <laughs> politician is on your side. Okay, valid. Yeah. Yeah. Every <laughs> uh, politician in this in the county is, and f at the federal level, the state level, and the local level, you've got everybody on your For side. For now, though, these yes. this is a very strong group, you know, and and we can sit here and say like, why would they do this? This is so stupid. These are not stupid people. They're very intelligent. They wouldn't have been able to get it this far without being intelligent. Mm -hmm. And so I think that thinking that we will always be protected by the, those in charge at the county is, is a little naive because these people have been able to infiltrate a lot of different organizations. And it, it is scary. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to sound like a conspiracy theorist, no, but no, this, I, is, uh, this is what's happening. We've, we've found it. We've, we've found these people in different organizations. Thankfully, when we find them, we're able to get them booted. But, but they're very, very intelligent with how they're working on this. Yeah. They, and this is the interesting thing. I mean, and this is the ironic thing in a certain way. As a dairy person, and you you explained it, and the dairy fo folks that I meet, and I meet quite a few, mm -hmm. um, they care about their animals. They love their animals. They want their animals to do well because the healthy animals are the most productive animals. Yep. Um, and you, you're farming organically, so that tells you something right there about your concern for the land and for the animals. 
But there, bad things do happen. There's of been course, evidence. Of course, yeah. yeah. Bad things have happened in, Bad things across happen the in life, right? Yeah, bad like, things happen. to our what families. I'm there, and, yes, but yeah. what I'm saying is there, there are instances periodically of animals being mistreated oh, by I see what you're dairy yep. workers. Or th- here in Sonoma County, we had that guy that had the horses out there and was starving his horses out mm-hmm. in southeast of Santa Rosa. That's and, horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. So there are legitimate concerns about animals being well-treated. Any humane person would be thinking that way. Yeah, of course. Nobody wants animals abused. I mean, um, right. unless you're a psychopath, there's probably a study out there somewhere that shows that people that want animals abused have got to be right. psychopaths some, right. uh, on some level. Right. Uh, I don't believe that anybody wants to see animals abused. And I think that that's a horrible thing. That is also why we go to extensive measures to do things like get certified for humane treatment, treatment. of animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is something that isn't talked about, but, um, you know, when you see, when you see the videos that they'll sneak in and get of, of dairy farmers abusing animals, things like that, a lot of times those same people are enticing the workers to abuse the animals so that they can get the footage. It's been proven. It's been proven in court Mm -hmm. and it's not acknowledged because it's a hype thing, right? You only see that first story when it comes out, they're abusing the animals, well, then you find out that they were being paid to abuse the animals. So that's even that's even more horrible, but nobody talks about it. The thing that that also nobody talks about, and I I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but if we find somebody abusing animals on our ranch, for instance, they're immediately fired. Mm-hmm. Immediately. There's no second chances. Mm-hmm. If you don't care about animals, you shouldn't be working on a farm. I was raised on a farm and not ever was I taught to abuse those animals. You take care of them. We, I had a calf in my house, in my front room and during the winter time because it was deathly sick and I was trying to get it better, you know, in my home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> not, my dad would not be happy if he knew that. So I'm gonna <laughs> tell him that. But, <laughs> uh-huh. but that's the thing is that is that there's zero tolerance on a farm for people abusing animals. Mm-hmm. I saw a few days ago, I saw one of our employees pushing the cows a little too fast and, and it made one of the cows nervous. And I said, Despacio, like easy, you know, and it's mm-hmm. not the right word, but despacio. Mm-hmm. I told him, despacio con mis vacas, mm-hmm. <laughs> slow with my cows, mm-hmm. because I want I want them to be treated well. And that was only for him pushing them quickly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I, I think that the challenge always in agriculture, because uh, I've spent an early part of my career working with farmers and activists who were kind of in opposition around different things. And, mm-hmm. and it's always one or two people that do something bad that impacts yeah, the whole industry. Totally. And that's the that's the sad thing that always that I always think about. But is, you have that in every industry, yes, you know? Yeah. And so we yeah. have to be real careful not to paint the whole industry with the same brush. Right. So how do we do that? I mean, that's the question I always have in my Communication. mind. Communication. I think I think that farmers think that if they're just working with their animals and doing a good job with their animals, then everybody will understand that, you know? And mm-hmm. I think that it's not quite the case. I think that we live in a time where people want more communication, but farmers aren't the type to get on social media. My dad doesn't even have social media. You know, mm-hmm. he wants to be out there with the animals. Mm-hmm. Farmers farm because they want to be around the land and the animals, mm-hmm. not around people. If they wanted to be around people, they would have marketing jobs. They would have <laughs> right. live they would live in work in town, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think that it's up to us, the kids of those farmers to get out and talk about it a little more and say what a good job that my dad does with the land and the animals and tell the stories of that have been passed down through the generations of how we are the best stewards of the land and how we do protect the open space. We are, we are the thing that stands between lands getting developed, you know, (laughs) and keeping nice and, and, and healthy lands. Yeah, it's true. I mean, one of the things that when I first moved to Sonoma County in 1990, the thing that struck me was the beauty and of obviously the agriculture is fantastic. And that mm-hmm. um, I just felt like, okay, this is, this is a place of great beauty and Thank you. Abundance. I love this place too. Yeah. Abundance, Abundance is a great word. Yeah. Exactly. I travel all around the world. You can't get food like we can here. No, that's right. And that's one of the biggest dangers of the Measure J thing is that it's going to affect the local food systems. Yep. I mean, we're very lucky and we take it for granted, but food isn't, they're, they're not going to stop 
milk and eggs from being shipped into Sonoma County. They're not, not going to stop people in Sonoma County from eating those things. They're just going to come from outside of Sonoma County, from farms that are much bigger than here. Right. I think a thing that gets overlooked a lot is that the farms in Sonoma County are one third of the size, the biggest. Like we're one of we're one of the larger ones in Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. The farms in Sonoma County are one third of the size of the average farms in California. Right. One third, the, our largest are one third. That's right. crazy. And it's being overlooked massively. Right. So they're starting with the people doing it the best. They're starting it with the right. smallest. And because I, if they win here, it will, yeah, they'll be able to go words, everywhere, right? You took the and, words right out of my mouth. Right, it's true. I'm glad and you see that. I, I, I'm sad that this has been attempted. And that's why we're so strongly against Measure J because they're picking the very wrong place. I think there might be places in the country where it would be appropriate because they're very big dairies. I don't disagree, but I can also tell you that as as dairy farmers, we're getting a lot of pressure to become bigger and I bigger know, and bigger. I know, the economics and, force it. Yeah, and my dad goes, oh, he thinks that he's not, not a good enough farmer because there's these 30,000 cow dairies and he's right. not that big. And I'm like, dad, we do it right. We're small enough. This is right. another thing about the Sonoma County farmers. We're small enough to be able to pivot according to what the community wants. Right. During COVID, right. people weren't getting enough milk and eggs. Guess what my family did? Mm -hmm. We went out and bought a creamery, moved a creamery onto the dairy so that we could bottle in small batches, the slow food style mm -hmm. with the low temperature pasteurized mm -hmm. milk mm -hmm. with very small batches. We did that. We did doorstep delivery for the community. Wow. Only during COVID. We don't do it anymore, mm -hmm. but we did it because we're small enough to be able to pivot and listen to the community around us. Mm -hmm. If we get put out of business, our cows get sold to those 10, 20, 30,000 cow dairies, right. they're not going to listen to the community. Right. They don't have the ability to. They're too big. Right. They do a good job at what they do. I'm not knocking them in any way. Mm -hmm. It's but a different business. It's a different business completely. And a different context. Yeah, we're, we're small here. Right. We hope you're enjoying the conversation. If you are, please rate our podcast and offer a review. Your voice will help us grow our listener base, which helps us sustain the funding to share these conversations with the people and organizations shaping a more just and regenerative future. A future in which the food and farm businesses are helping to solve the largest challenges of our time. That is the beauty of Sonoma County. I, I think of all the people that I know, the duck producers, the lamb producers, the pig producers, mm -hmm. the cattle producers who could be impacted by this in a very negative way. Yeah. And um, it's it's it, it really does freak me out because this is one of the last places in the state where you can have lots of small farms and yep. have them survive. Exactly. And that's because we have a culture of tourism here. Yep. People come for the wine and the food. And, and that views. Comedy, and views, and that's very, very important. We have incredible cheeses. Yes, we do. Because of the dairy. <laughs> uh, I had, so, go ahead. Sonoma County and Ferndale are the smallest right. dairy farms in all of California. That's right. Uh, it's those two places. Right. Sonoma Ferndale, County. Ferndale up in Humboldt County. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful and place. And Sonoma yeah. County gets combined with Marin County a lot because they only have few, fewer dairies down there. Mm -hmm. um, we provide, between Sonoma and Marin County, we provide 50% of the organic milk in California. Mm -hmm. If we get put out, where's your organic milk coming from? Right. Those aren't going to move to somewhere else. Right. Right. So <laughs> that's got to be thought of too. And that's a really good point. I haven't heard anyone bring that up before. Yeah. That's an excellent point. I'll tell 50 you 50% <laughs> yeah. of the organic milk in the state of California comes from, uh, uh, from, from our area, from, area. from here, right, here. right here, the farms that are going to be shut down. Yeah. And if you shut down what's what they're calling the big guys, the thing that they don't understand is the trickle down effect. Right. We lose all the resources. You right. shut down the big guys. Who? Where do you get the grain from? The grain right. mills are going to get shut down. Right. The, the this is the creameries, the veterinarians. Right. Nobody's talking about this, but just so you know, the city council in Petaluma is already talking about what happens to the grain mills, and they're not talking right. about if. They Does get anyone shut down. who's been to Petaluma has seen those big grain mills in the edge of There's the There's three of kind them. Kind of in the in, center of town, in town. feed the dairies and the, and the poultry farms. They're already talking about how right. that they're going to change the zoning of those areas and develop them. Right. That's dangerous. Right. You know, you really you want- You need that infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. thing's happening with the apples. Apples are going out and, and the apple plant, Montana apple plant out in West County is closing down. Yeah. What's going to happen to the, the, the apple guys? They the lose their resources. So right. even if- they quote unquote, only the big guys are going to be affected by this. No, the little guys right. are going to lose all their resources. They go out next. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. That people don't think about infrastructure and how important it is because the whole thing about how a plant runs is it has to have throughput. You have to have yes. the product running through the plant. Otherwise it will fail. We we're having in the state of California, 
the plants that harvest the beef Mm -hmm. up and down the state are going out of business because the Midwest is buying up all the meat because there's a shortage of of beef in the United States. So all the animals are getting shipped out of the state. It's putting our our local, small, medium-sized processing plants out of business in the state of California. All the mom and pop guys go out and who who benefits from that? The Amazons and the Walmarts and the big dogs, you know? I want to say too, one of their arguing points here, we talk about like, how did this even get the signatures that it has gotten? Well, they were sitting outside of stores and flat out lying to people. They're saying, we're going to put factory farms out of business. Right. There's not factory farms in Sonoma County. Take right. a drive and, right. and check it out for yourself. They're saying, oh, this is only going to affect 21 farms in Sonoma County. Do you know how many dairies are in Sonoma County? 54. Mm-hmm. That's half 54. Yeah. yeah. There used to be 800. Yes, I know. We're already the endangered species. Right. So you really want to, you really want to put that large of a number out? We only have 77 chicken farms. Did you know that? Yeah, I did know that. Yeah. They're saying that there's 3,000. No, there's not. There's right. just over 100 animal farms left. Mm-hmm. And you're going to put what percentage of them out right. of business? Right. It's going to crumble. It's going to crumble Sonoma County and what we know. That I keep saying to people, this isn't a fight against the farmers. This is a fight against the community. There's 482,000 people in Sonoma County. There's just over 100 animal farms that are being attacked with this measure. That many cannot talk to 482,000 people. Right. If people like their way of life in Sonoma County in the Bay Area, they've got to stand up against this and have the backs of the farmers. I, I, I really appreciate what you're saying. And, and what it brings up for me that um, has impressed me that I've never seen this before. All of the sustainable agriculture, organic, regenerative agriculture, kind of local agriculture, all those organizations in this county are against the measure, Mm -hmm. along with Farm Bureau and um, all the restaurants, restaurants, wineries, all the chefs. We have contractors on our team. We've got the heavy equipment operators on our team. We've got like, this is, this is going beyond our food here, our food in Sonoma County. We're so lucky to have the farm to table thing. We're, we're called the Tuscany of California for a reason. We're spoiled here. Everybody benefits from agriculture around here and from having animal farms. Mm -hmm. The people that bicycle on our back roads, man, they love seeing the cows. We have people all the time stop and take pictures of our cows, of our baby calves. I go out and explain to them. They're like, why are they in these hutches? They think that they're veal calves, right? Mm -hmm. Well, hutches are like dog igloos. They keep Mm -hmm. the heat in when it's cold outside and, you know, keep the cows cool or keep the cows warm, just like those dog igloos that you see. They're babies. You don't see babies grouped in in group housing. No, their immune systems are, are weak. We've got to, we keep them separate, like babies in a baby crib. And then when they graduate, when they're old enough, then they get to go into preschool. And then you mm-hmm. see them running around in the field together right. once their immune systems are built up, you know? So I get to speak to all the bicyclists that drive by and, and learn about this stuff. And that's cool. But I think that that's, you know, there, there's a big opportunity here. And I always say where there's a problem, there's opportunity. Measure J is the problem, mm-hmm. but it's opening up an opportunity for communication, mm-hmm. better communication with our community. It's making all the farmers mm-hmm. have to think a little bit better about how to get the word out. Even the guys like my dad that want to stay quiet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, dad. You've got to talk to the public. Mm-hmm. And, and so is he listening to you? He he is. Good, good, good. <laughs> My dad's a very good teacher. And so he I I tell him, teach people, mm-hmm. you know, explain to them the importance of proper grazing, of mm-hmm. not overgrazing, mm-hmm. the importance of being able to be have the small, nimble farms. Mm-hmm. And he and he likes it. So Good. We just have to get him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah, Thank, well. Thankfully, I have my mom's side too because she's real spunky and uh, talks more. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good, good. <laughs> So how did you get involved with Measure J? How did talk about the organization that you are representing in this conversation? Oh, good, good call. Communities for Food and Family Farms is the organization that we that we started. Um, we were hearing from a lot of farmers that they were not happy with the way that we were being represented. Like we're not, we weren't getting the word out enough as farmers. And so I was having meetings with um, some of the duck farmers and the chicken farmers because, you know, we're dairy, but I needed to get all angles. I needed to get all sides of this to be able to, to know if I should push forward with something. Mm-hmm. We started doing that. Then we started having meetings with um, the restaurants in town and wineries. And like I told you, the, the equipment, um, like tractor supply mm-hmm. companies and things like that. 
and everybody was saying that they weren't hearing enough information about this, that the word needed to get out more. And so a quite large group of us got together and said, we need to do something here Mm -hmm. or this, or this whole County is going to be affected in a very negative way. Our livelihood, our lifestyle is going to change. Our culture is going to be lost. And so we stepped up and we made our nonprofit organization, Communities for Food and Family Farms, also known as CF3, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to our group. Mm -hmm. And we have the mindset, this isn't just for Measure J. It's much, much bigger. You're part of the slow food movement. That's something that we believe strongly in as well. Mm -hmm. Um, We we think that we're doing food the way that food's supposed to be. And we need to have better communication. And so Communities for Food and Family Farms is going to be around after Measure J. And we're going to open up the community and bridge the gap between them and the farmers. Wow. We want people to feel more connected to their food. Are you going to be the spokeswoman? I would love to be. I don't, I think we have several. Mm -hmm. If you know, if you've seen anything that we do, Bronte is another one. She's Mm -hmm. a big advocate for what we're doing. She's a first generation farmer. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's got sheep. She, she would be, she's small enough. She would not quote unquote, be affected by this. Uh, Unless the infrastructure J. stuff. And that's what she's scared of. So yep. she's a major advocate for this. She's also seen how often the farms are getting attacked. So she's not, she's not okay with the farmers getting attacked and them storming onto properties where, you know, kids are living and a lot of minorities that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they just kind of want to be left alone a lot of the time. <laughs> so I want to say something on that too. Actually, I, I, that just reminded me. Part of this uh, proposed measure is that they're saying that they will retrain the employees. When you ask any of our employees, you want to be retrained, they're furious with this measure Mm -hmm. because they're like, nobody asked us. We moved here because we want to work with animals. What are we going to do? They're going to retrain us to do a city job. We don't want to do that. Like we're going to have to move somewhere else to work alongside animals. They love working on the farm. They're very offended that somebody else would have, would decide for them what they should or shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, they're not the ones making their own decisions. Mm-hmm. Like they're full grown adults. <laughs> Give them a little bit more respect than that. They right. feel absolutely disrespected by these people coming in and saying that just because they're the minorities that they don't have a say in what they should and shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. They're doing something beneath them by working on a farm. People that work on farms love farms. Yep. It's, it's crazy talk. That's interesting. So are there, do you have any of the, um, the dairy workers out talking? That'd be really interesting. You know, they're kind of like they're farmers, right? Like they they don't want to go talk. Yeah. They don't want to go talk. They, Mm -hmm. I've asked them, you know, Mm -hmm. I've had, we have lots of conversations with our employees. We're friends with our employees. We go to their, you know, the, the ones that are Latinos, like we go to their quinceaneras, their weddings, they come to ours. Like Mm -hmm. we're very intertwined with our employees. Uh, We've got guys that have been with us since I was a little kid, you know? And so like, we have loads of conversations and I've asked them, will you speak? Will your, you know, will your wife speak? And they get real quiet. They are uh, yeah, a well, I mean, it's a, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not a, it's not often an easy time. Yeah, for, but I think that there are people that we need to listen to. Their lives are going to be directly affected. They're mm-hmm. getting attacked when, when people storm these farms. They're the ones having to deal with them. Yeah. So it's scary for them. It's scary for their family. It's not okay. And they're, t- I think that they're being taken advantage of completely mm-hmm. because they're minorities and because they don't stand up and and some of them don't speak English. And so these people that are storming these farms are terrorizing them. Mm-hmm. It's not okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it that you're going, I mean, what you have, what is it, 70 days until the election? Uh, well, actually, people start voting in about yeah. uh, 35 days. October or 40, 7th, I think yeah, it is. Yeah. October 7th, so yep. not that long, uh, six weeks. So, I mean, do you have a plan of action for how you guys are going to campaign between now and then? Yeah, so we have uh, quite a lot of little events planned. So we've done some town hall gatherings, which have been awesome. Uh, I think that those help to get the word out. But we need a lot of help. Like we need volunteers coming. We we need to plan more town halls so that we can talk to more people. Podcasts are a fantastic way to get the word out. Mm-hmm. We need help getting the word out. One of the things that we're recognizing is that the media is not for us. The media has been has attacked the farmers as well. My my grandfather, they put my my grandfather, who's not with us anymore, on the front page of the paper to slander our family name. He's not even alive to defend himself. 
this is the angle that they're taking instead of supporting. When was that? Oh, probably two months ago. Wow. I'll send you the article if you'd yeah. like. But so, so we have. Um, I did see the article. Uh, was it yesterday that that really <laughs> focused on the demonstrations over the weekend that were in support of Measure J? Yep, and they didn't focus on. We had a, a booth out downtown in Petaluma on the No on J, and both of my parents manned that booth. And they didn't. They didn't focus on anything like that. That were that no one Jay is. Which doing. surprises me because the agriculture industry is united, right, left, and center on yeah, this thing. Not just agriculture. And which which food the, the whole food yeah, industry. The whole, that's right. And so uh, that surprises me because the Press Democrat, if you're talking about the Press Democrat, is the biggest paper in the region, and it is dependent upon that industry, all those industries, restaurant, yeah, I don't tourism, know. wineries. Dairies, everybody. I mean, Strauss. I mean, well, both Strauss and and Clover, uh, Clover are advertise vehemently against this. We have meetings with Albert Strauss. Albert Strauss yeah, came to our I town to hall Albert, and yeah, spoke. I talked to him yeah, a few days ago. Albert's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, he is. And, and so, but but I'm surprised that the Press Democrat is. We were too. We're uh, disappointed is the right word because um, we we think we do a a good job of keeping Sonoma County, you know, the, a happy, healthy place, and they're they're dragging us through the mud. So it's, it's discouraging, um, but it is what it is. And so then therefore it's important to get out on podcasts and things like this and, and speak to people that we got to speak to people that are outside of the agriculture industry. Honestly, right, right, <laughs> that's, right, right. farmers are real good about speaking to other farmers. <laughs> right, right. No, you've got to talk to the public. You, you have to. to. And so, yeah. and so I'll tell you a couple of things that we're doing. We're par- partnering with a winery in Sonoma Valley of mm-hmm. Vianza, and mm-hmm. we're doing a big event, a big fancy event on September 25th. Good. We are working to get politicians and business owners good. and presidents of organizations from all around the Bay Area mm-hmm. to attend to that. That's going to be something that I think is going to be a big deal because it's going to be our first annual. We're going to keep doing these because I told you we're going right. on Beyond Measure J. Mm-hmm. Um, we're doing a, a thing called Come Over October on October 12th and 13th, where it's aligning with the wine industry. It's, you know, wine and cheese, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're doing, that's going to be a large event where we're going to have hundreds of people at that one. Where will that be? Um, that's going to be in Petaluma. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking at an old mill mm-hmm. uh, that right that it'll be a real cool, cool location. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing things like that to get the word out. But the bigger thing is for us right now is volunteers. We're a tiny, tiny group. And like I already told you, we're there's, I'm working mostly from the dairy angle of things, 54 dairies. And we can't talk to all the 482,000 people. So if we have people in the community, especially people that are listening, Mm -hmm. I don't care if they're across the United States, people that want to get involved with protecting smaller agriculture, the the whole slow food way of being, Mm -hmm. get a hold of us because this needs to be, in my opinion, this needs to be a national movement on our side. There are a lot of attacks on farms right now on our, on our food system is really difficult right now. And so we need people that are willing to talk about it. We need people that are willing to host events. We need people who are willing to bring signs out to people because our tiny group isn't big enough to get all the signs out. We're very behind right now on it. And Mm -hmm. so these are the things we need. We need people that are willing to go door to door and talk to people. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that, you know, that are the most, um, vulnerable, when the yes on Jay side shows up at their door and shows them a picture of a chicken on its back that mm-hmm. we found on their social media from four years ago in Modesto. It's mm-hmm. not even from Sonoma County, mm-hmm. but they're showing up and they have a, it's a compelling story, man. If I was asked, do you want to protect animals and get rid of factory farms? Yes. Mm-hmm. Sign me up. Mm-hmm. That should be all of our reaction. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that that's we don't not have factory farms. True right. story. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we need people that are willing to talk about our side of it. Right. So communities for food and family farms. Our website is foodandfamilyfarms.com. Foodandfamilyfarms.com. Yep. Food and family and I'm farms. Shalina, com, and you're Shalina. S H E L I N A right. at foodandfamilyfarms.com. Yeah. People right, are Shalina. An more email. than welcome. And you can, and, if you're a volunteer, if you're willing to put up a sign or make calls or walk, or walk the neighborhood, Shalina. Or host events. At food and, at, at, food and family farms.com. Shalina at food and family Yeah, farms. and com. businesses that'll get on board with us or donate for the silent auction or donate to the live auction because that's even more fun, right? Right. Anybody that's willing to do that kind of stuff would be amazing. And following us on Instagram, we have a brand new Instagram page, so we only have 200 followers. But What is it? We, uh, it's Food and Family Farms. It's okay. at Food and Family Farms. Okay. 
and and we've got a new Facebook, same thing. So those those kind of things really help, you know. Good. Share the videos yeah. and interact with us. Yeah, I'll, I'll do Ask that. Ask us questions. I, we did. You Roots of Change did send out a um, a blast to our our followers in the Bay Area, and awesome. I did get some emails from people saying, "Hey, thanks for this." Did I was you? confused as to what to do, and uh, uh, yeah, and I, oh. and I shared uh, CalCan put yes, out a really fantastic. nice yeah put out a really nice. Uh, press release with the long list of all the supportive organizations who uh-huh. were against Measure J. Yep. And that the, we use that and just push that out. That's awesome. And we're gonna do we're gonna do this. This is gonna come out in October. Okay. This, this beginning of October. And then um we will do in our next two newsletters, September, October, we're going to put more. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy. The organizations that are st- standing up behind this, like CalCan, the Teamsters, yep. right. we've got the Democrat committee, we've got the Republican committee, you right. know, all sides are against what's going on here. I know. And it's it's been, it's been awesome because Western United Dairies is another one that's standing up big time mm-hmm. against this. They are all of the Western dairies, Western United States, and they see that this thing will go national if we don't stop it here. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I want to say one other thing about this is that I don't think people understand how deeply rooted this is. There is, these people are attacking us left and right. We're, we're getting- When you say these people, you mean the animal rights people, the people that want- I don't want to even call them animal, yeah, animal rights people, but they're animal extremists. And they're they're coming in, they have already put the Mulis Dairy out of business. I don't know if you heard about that. That same group has also sued the duck farm and they're suing our family. Right now we're in our third lawsuit from these people. We keep on having to pay- loads of money to, to, lawyers. to lawyers to prove ourselves right. Mm-hmm. Because in, in California, you can sue for any reason. Mm-hmm. And so they're coming on, they're trying to take our water rights that we've had since the 1800s. They're trying to say that, you know, all these different things, they're trying to skew it to make, put us out of business one way or the other. They have put out publicly on social media that their goal is to bankrupt all of us, mm-hmm. all the farms. I want to tell you another one of their goals that's public. By 2040, this whole Measure J thing is the tip of the iceberg. By 2040, their goal is to be rid of animal agriculture throughout the United States and to take away all of your dogs and cats. Anybody that thinks that that's a conspiracy theory can go on their website and check it out for themselves. I haven't heard that, but that's amazing if it's true. Yep, I'll send you a screenshot. Yeah, I don't, I don't want traffic on their website, so I'll sc- send you a screenshot. Okay. <laughs> but anybody, anybody can go and look it up. I was amazed that they have that public, but they do. So this is this is much deeper than just the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They're, it's a the problem in the country. We have extremists in many different areas, and mm-hmm. this is a good example. And and you know, it's interesting to wonder why there's so many so much extremism now, uh, and it's really frustrating because extremism doesn't really help. I think it's because we don't listen to each other. Ah, I think uh-huh. that if we have more conversation and more understanding of each other as humans. I honestly think that we wouldn't have so much extremists. So my mom has always been a big proponent of uh, communication is key. And so what I've done, this is probably frowned upon by a lot of farmers, but after the board of supervisors meeting where Linda Hopkins said, this is, we have one thing in common and it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) But after that meeting, I sat and I talked to the proponents of uh, Yes on Jay I had a, a actually a pretty good conversation with them and they were like, what's the pro? What do you think is the problem? And, and we thought that the little guys would, the little farmers would appreciate this movement. No, they don't. They didn't, right. un- they don't, a lot of the people that are pushing that it don't understand. It's an ecosystem of, yeah. uh, of people working together and, and needing each and other. And that kind of communication, I think, doesn't happen nowadays because people are so used to getting attacked. Mm-hmm. But if you sit down, that wasn't the only time I've sat down with these people. I've, I've sat down with them on several occasions because I think that it's important to actually talk about things because, hey, I understand that you don't want animals to be abused. I don't either. Mm-hmm. I actually run an animal rescue group. I haven't talked about that, but during the fires, this is part of farms being nimble. My dad donated his stock trailers for me and my brother to go save animals out of the wildfires. We started a group called NorCal Livestock Evacuation. We were nicknamed Team Badass because mm-hmm. we rescued about 1,500 animals out of the Tubbs fire, which mm-hmm. everybody around here knows about the California wildfires. Right we like animals. <laughs> we want to save animals. And so when you have a conversation like that, I, I told these people like, Hey, I run an animal rescue group. And they were like, 
oh, we've actually heard of your group. We know of you. I'm like, yeah, that was started by 15 farmers that showed up on Bennett Valley Road all together right, to save horses, you yeah, know, yeah. out of the fire. We teamed together. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that opens their eyes when they start hearing like, no, like we care about animals too. Mm-hmm. But Good. we have to have those conversations. I told. So know, thank you for yeah, having this conversation. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm I'm very impressed uh, with a few things. One, uh, the kind of diversity of your life, all the things that you're doing. <laughs> Uh, fo followed by the fact that you are so well versed in this issue and have a lot of great, uh, I think, arguments and statements for why Measure J is such a bad idea um, and why it's amazing how unified the county is around Isn't it. Isn't it? Uh, and, and I'm just hoping that that will ensure its defeat. The unifying is the coolest thing about it because yeah. you have people from all different walks of life right. and what else and what else allows that? I know. And this day and age, I mean, right in the middle of a presidential election, which yeah. is really vitriolic, here we are, right and left, all supporting Everybody. the defeat of Measure J and because it will destroy so cool. agriculture and as it will we destroy, understand it. It will destroy county. Sonoma County. It will destroy the Bay Area. And, right. and that is, it's so unifying. I, I love it. It's the coolest thing about Measure J. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a very interesting thing. And so I just anyway, hope it I, continues. Yeah, me too. And I, I wish you luck. I with, hope the conversation continues. I need to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and good luck with the, the group you formed. Thank and, you. And um, I appreciate it. I hope people will, will reach out to you with the interest in supporting. And I hope so hopefully too. they will. Anyone that lives in Sonoma County votes no on, on Measure J. I mean, we want a TV show out of this, you know, oh, let's, that, let's, yeah. let's, let's make a, a Bay Area Clarkson's farm. <laughs> Great, yeah, why not? Send Netflix my way. We've got yeah. enough characters. Right. That's true. That's true. So, Shalina, thank you very much yeah, for your time. Thank you yeah, thank you so much. A, I really, yeah, really appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Roots of Change is a program of the Public Health Institute.